Good morning, this is Sheldon here from the Currency Advisory Desk. Well, yesterday the much-awaited RBI policy uh, inter the decision was out and we saw that RBI yesterday cut the SLR rate to 23% and the CRR and the repo rates were unchanged. Now, we know that the SLR rate, I mean, this would affect the credit policy more than the liquidity, liquidity conditions in the market. As banks, you know, they will have to hold lesser amount of securities in the form of gold, government uh, treasure, treasuries and cash with the RBI as compared to if they would probably go for a cut in, you know, CRR. Now, this gives more leverage to banks to go ahead with their loan uh, schedule or to go ahead with the planning for you know disbursement of loans so the the credit uh, policy that is there of banks that gets increased by this sort of action however the rbi also forecasted you know the the growth which was there it has been revised further down to 6.5 percent and the inflation forecast has been increased to 7 percent now this is bearish for the rupee but if we look at it from a broader angle we see that this is a good move by the rbi well why because primarily firstly if you're uh, targeting the credit policy and you're not going for liquidity it has a lesser impact on inflation now inflation is the primary target of rbi they want to control inflation so this is a good move secondly we see that if there is any quantitative easing which is you know the rounds uh, the talks are going on that uh, there would be some qe from US or probably Bank of England next week would probably go in for some QE. If this happens, the prices here will, will just run up, will shoot up drastically. So this is a good measure to contain that particular scenario. Uh, looking at uh, w the other data that has come out, we also saw today that HSBC, the India HSBC PMI, the manufacturing index has drastically fallen down to 52.9 versus 55 in the month of June. So this is again negative for the rupee. However, today all eyes are set on the FOMC meet. Now we do not expect any quantitative easing decision to be uh, pronounced today. However, we have some expectation that there will be an indication of further QE in September. Uh, basis this, we feel that you know we could go ahead and probably buy the the dollar against the rupee, and we have a strategy also on that. Uh, looking at the pound, well, the pound looks bearish, the outlook is bearish because internationally we've seen that for the past couple of sessions, it's not breaking the very important resistance of 1.5745. This has an uh, impact here also. Uh, out here also, if we look at it, the pound does look bearish against the rupee. We'll go get to the levels a bit later on. We are seeing that even though there have been a lot of positive comments from Draghi, you know, saying that the entire Euro region will probably support, uh, you know, they will do whatever they can to support the Euro, they will not allow the Euro to dissolve. Um, analysts worldwide are questioning these comments, whether he is just shooting them in the air, the air or is there actually a sounding for these particular comments. Because there isn't any economic news or fundamental news coming out all the data which is coming out from europe is indicating towards recession is indicating towards negative numbers in fact we even saw that the eurozone unemployment rate which came out yesterday it was at a record high of 11.2 percent so all these you know the, the supports i mean what uh, the the bankers or what you know the politicians are talking that nothing is going to happen to the euro the data is showing a different side of the coin altogether so it's, it's really questioning as to you know, the integrity of these particular comments that are coming out. Now looking worldwide, we also saw China's uh, purchasing managers index, it fell to 50.1 and it is still holding above you know, the crucial 50 levels because anything below 50 will indicate that for sure the Chinese economy has gone into contraction. But it's, it's, on, a very, it's on a very marginal level that it's holding on to these, this particular 50 level. We've seen that there are a lot of uh, negative signs for risk instruments. If we talk about the euro, which is considered to be risky, or you know, we talk even about the pound, or even worldwide equity markets, we see that there's a lot of negative news coming out, and this is not supporting the risk on sentiment that we had witnessed some few days back. Now, so that leaves it only with the dollar and the yen, and we see that these two currencies are going to get a strong support from these. Uh, these events which are going to come out as in the FOMC meet, the Bank of England and ECB decision that is there. So today all eyes are focused on FOMC and that is how you know we have designed a strategy. Uh, looking at the technical levels, we expect a bullish run in the dollar 
and the important support is at 55.4 on the downside for spot basis and for uh, the resistance is at around 56.16 however there's a very crucial resistance in between at 55.85 now if it breaks 55.85 we see a smooth run up to 56.16 uh, looking at the euro well the euro the trend is bullish also for the intraday we see that there's a strong support at 68.21 and a resistance at 68.84 on the upside now the trend for the pound is bearish basis all the factors that we discussed and on the downside we see that you know there is a, a strong support at around 86.78 levels and on the upside we see a resistance of around 87.76 levels the yen is a strong bullish call we are advising buy on yen uh, because what every time there is a major event happening we always see the yen running up primarily because of safe haven buying and also because today the FOMC meet that will come into play. So we see a support at around 71 levels on the downside and we see a very important uh, resistance at around 71.92 levels. If it breaks the 92 level then it's definitely going to run up to probably 72 to 72.50 in the immediate term. Well that's it for today. Thank you.